Hello. A charity that I'm particularly passionate about is the Afghanistan Central Asian Association because, in part, they look after impoverished girls in Afghanistan, which was in part the reason why we were out there in the first place. Uh, so I think that's really important. And when you ask for people's money outside of a professional context, outside of your pensions, um, when you get that email that uh, barges its way into your inbox and it says, I'm going to do something and I'd like you to sponsor me for it, um, I broadly think there has to be two things before you give up some of your hard-earned money for sponsorship. The first one uh, is a high degree of suffering on the individual that's taking part in it. <laughs> so uh, last year I took part in some suffering uh, and you fronted up some cash and we raised about eight and a half grand for the Afghan uh, Central Asian Association. Um, and then this year, I plan to take part in some further suffering. Um, picking your suffering is getting harder and harder. So if you go on social media, there is someone trekking uh, the Arctic Circle naked, you know, putting on their own kit, whatever it may be. And it seems to be to resonate with people um, and to generate a level of sponsorship. It just gets harder. So I thought what I would do this year is I'd just invent something. Um, and then that way you can't gauge me against all the other brilliant people that have done much harder and better things. Uh, and as it stands at the moment, right now, there is a gentleman running the length of Africa. Uh, you might have seen him, the hardest geezer, every day he runs an ultra marathon, and he's on day 138, and he's only halfway. So I can't compete with that. Um, so I will be uh, assaulting your inboxes at some point for some money, but I will come up with an event uh, later in this year where I promise there will be a high degree of suffering. <coughs> so part two for asking for money is make sure you're attached to a great charity. And I really believe in the charity, and the people that are about to just give a quick introduction to their charity, um, I just want to embarrass them very quickly because uh, they spend their time uh, speaking to senior level politicians, the Prime Minister, and answering emails to me about, you know, how can I raise money for your charity, where I appreciate I am subtactical in their intros, but they take the time to get back to me. Um, their journey to the UK is, I suspect, perhaps nothing like any of our journeys have ever been to the state. Um, so I'd like to introduce Dr. Nassimi and uh, Mr. Nassimi as well, his yeah. son, uh, just to introduce your charity, please. Okay. You will start first, or shall I? Well, I will start first, actually. Well, first of all, thank you very much, James, for inviting us to tonight's event, and thank you so much for your inspirational story about um, about Braymont as well. I'll just give a brief overview about the Afghanistan and Central Asian Association, which is a charity that was founded <clears throat> 24 years ago, after my family came to the UK as refugees from Afghanistan to escape the Taliban. It was a very difficult journey across Europe, and then eventually we arrived in the southeast of London, in Lewisham, which is where um, the charity was founded. And the main aim is to help refugees with integration through English classes for adults, Saturday school for children to help them with their school subjects, free legal advice on housing, immigration and family issues, women's empowerment to help victims of domestic violence and also running women's groups, employment support, CV development, helping refugees with finding a job or with setting up a business, because we've come across lots of refugees who've got different skills, different ideas. Some of them were running businesses back home, but they don't know how to start a business from scratch in the UK, how to write a business plan, how to apply for a small loan how to deal with all the legal paperwork, signing a lease or finding a solicitor. And this is all about making a contribution to the British economy and to British society. And then there's also mental health and counselling sessions, one-to-one -one with translation. Cultural events, we held a two-day summer festival at Gunnersbury Park in Ealing on the 24th and 25th of June. The first day was Afghan music, the second day was Ukrainian music, and we had around 7,000 people attending. And then we have sports activities for young people. We've got a girls' football club funded by Comic Relief, the first Afghan girls' cricket club funded by Sport England, and then other fitness programmes for the elderly. We became very busy after the fall of Afghanistan two years ago, when hundreds of people were contacting us every day to get some advice about how to bring their family members to the UK. And then lots of media coverage and then donations from the public, which we distributed to people living at the hotels. We then opened our second branch office in Birmingham, 
funded by Save the Children, and we're now the largest Afghan charity in the UK by income, thanks to the support of donors like the Big Lottery Fund, BBC Children in Need, um, Comic Relief, Henry Smith, and, and a range of others. We've also recently expanded our work nationally across the UK, so we're currently operating in Manchester, in Scotland, in Somerset, Coventry, Kent, Oxford, Milton Keynes, Nottingham, and these are DWP-funded contracts um, through the local job centres. And we don't just help people from Afghanistan, we've got lots of people from Eastern Europe now, from Ukraine, even from South America, from the Middle East. And we work very closely with um, GPs and with local councils who refer people to us. And then there's our new project, which is digital education for Afghan girls to help them with coding and animation skills, especially those girls who were airlifted by um, the British Army two years ago after the fall of Kabul. And then there's our work inside Afghanistan, which is focusing around humanitarian aid. So we opened two citizens' advice centres uh, in Kabul and Pulakhumri in the north, um, which was funded by UK Aid, um, formerly DFID, which is now known as um, FCDO, and then the Canadian Embassy in Kabul, and then we improved access to clean water and helped people during COVID um, by distributing oxygen machines. And as a charity, we've received numerous awards, like the Queen's Award for Voluntary Services, and Dr. Nassimi um, was the first British Afghan to receive an MBE um, this year, which I think is a great achievement for the whole family.